Good morning, good morning, influencers. Good morning. I'm going to give you a few seconds to come on in. Good morning. I am super, super excited to be back with you all. I feel like it's been forever, although it was just last Saturday. So again, I apologize for not um, coming on Wednesday. However, Wednesday, I was filled with excitement as I had walked the stage after completing this degree program that has taken me uh, many years, many, many years of starting and stopping. And I am honored and blessed to say that I had gotten back into the rhythm at late in 2015 and I began to get in, uh, consistent. Good morning, Ty. Good morning. So I began to get um, consistent with my studies. So I am so grateful that I was able to complete that thing. So this morning, this morning, this morning, Ty, today, after this live, we will, we will be talking today. So this morning's um, topic, uh, Saturday, uh, surrogate Saturday, uh, whose baby are you carrying? Thank you so much, Ty. Whose baby are you carrying? This topic and um, the information that I'm going to pre be presenting this morning was inspired by a conversation me and a few young ladies were having on last night. Um, and we got together and we've been getting together um, since Wednesday. I just love, love, love what God is doing um, not only in my life, but in the lives of those that are surrounding me, um, just being able to see them grow and being able to see them step into their God-given purpose. It is amazing. Um, so this morning, I want to be talking about surrogate. And I, and of course, as you know, I utilize an adjective with every day of the week. So today is surrogate Saturday. And the question is, whose baby are you carrying? And when we were talking last night, this topic hit me and it was like, whoa, this is amazing, but this is also much needed in order for us as influencers to be able to identify exactly the process of why we go through and grow through the things that we do. So surrogate, a lot of times when you hear the term surrogate, you, you think of it as, you know, someone um, carrying a baby for another woman or, uh, you know, another woman that's unable to carry a baby herself. So, of course, as you know, um, Wow Inspired is all about giving you a different perspective, giving you a different um, angle and a different position to view the very things that you are going through in your life. So I always start with a definition. So surrogate is defined by the noun def. Well, I'll start with the adjective because this is what we all know. Um, the adjective is defined by Google as relating to the birth of a child or children by means of surrogacy. But the noun definition is a substitute, especially a person deputizing for another in a specific role or office. So when I looked up this definition, I'm not, you know, ashamed to say, when I say deputizing, like, what is that? So I looked up the term deputizing, and this is all going to come together in a full circle and make sense before we get off the live. So I looked up the term deputizing, and what does it mean when it says deputizing in the definition of surrogate? And deputizing is, it says, um, the definition is a temporary act of, um, a act of, or a temporary act or speak or the ability to speak as a deputy, um, to make someone a deputy. But the, the key word here is temporary. So um, this morning, I want to talk about uh, the, the, the birthing and the baby that you are carrying. And I don't mean baby in the a sense of natural. I'm talking about the spiritual baby that you are carrying. And my question is, Whose baby are you carrying? Um, a lot of times when we we think about 
um, being able or having the ability to uh, be impregnated with a child, it's a very special thing. And although some women do not have the ability to uh, carry their own baby, so they look for a surrogate to produce um, something as precious as life for them. In the spirit realm, when looking at the term surrogate, and thinking about it in the spirit realm, I'm thinking about who's, who has God gifted you? Who has God, what is the position that God has placed you in that allows you to carry someone else's baby? So when I seen the term uh, deputizing and it says the temporary act or the ability to speak as a deputy. The term temporarily stuck out to me because this does not mean that you're going to be doing this forever because temporarily, as we all know, to do something temporary is only to do it for a season. So I begin to just kind of think about it and I begin to let the definitions just kind of marinate in my spirit. And I begin to just be like, wow, like this is amazing. Because oftentimes when we look at terms, when we look at situations, when we look at life circumstances, we look at them from the angle in which only we see them. We're not looking at them from all angles. We're not looking at them from all sides. We're only seeing what we can see from the angle in which we're standing at. So even with the term surrogacy or the term surrogate, I was always thinking of when you say surrogate, I'm thinking of a woman that has the ability to carry a child for another woman. But here by way of definition, the noun version or the noun definition of surrogate is a substitute, comma, especially a person deputizing, meaning a person that has the ability to be, to make temporary decisions or speak temporarily as a deputy. A deputy is someone that is in charge for another in a specific role or a specific office. So this does not mean that you're going to be in the position long term. It's almost like getting a job with a temp agency. You know that some jobs that you work with the temp agency, while it's your desire to work with the company long term, you know going in because the temp agency hired you for the position that you don't know when the assignment is going to end. So when I was looking at this, I'm like, wow, like this is another perspective. This is another um, angle to, to view the term surrogate um, without looking at it in the form of, oh, another woman carrying another woman's baby. So just looking at it from this perspective in this definition, it says a substitute, especially a person deputizing for another in a specific role or a specific office. So it's just like any um, position or any thing that you set out to do. There is levels of, you know, um, there's levels and, and steps that you have to go up in order to make it to the place that you want to be in life. And in the process of you going through life and going through the processes to get to the place that you desire to be, there's a couple of questions that you must ask in your process of going to the place that you desire. And some of those questions include, God, is this the place that you would have me to be in? Um, God, is this what you would have me to be doing at this particular time, at this particular season, in this particular place with these particular people? Is this what you would have me to do? So when we start talking about surrogate, when we start talking about, and I ask the question, whose baby is you, are you carrying? Um, I'm reminded of just the gifting. God has given you a gift. And when I look up the definition for gift, it's a thing given willingly to someone without payment. It's a present. So majority of the time people think, oh, Christmas and presents and things like that. But another definition for the term gift is a natural ability or talent. So God has given you some natural talent, some natural abilities to be able to produce something greater 
However, when you are in your reproduction phase, that there is going to be a time that you are going to literally have to be the surrogate for someone else. So while you are gifted, while you have a natural ability, a natural talent, while God has given you the gift, the gift is great. However, in the process of having the gift and identifying what the gift is, you have to pray and ask God to give you then the anointing because the anointing will put you in a place to understand that I am called, I am called literally to carry Ty's baby. I'm called to carry Monique's baby. I'm called to carry Jamal's baby. Jamal is a man. So Shay, what do you mean you are called to carry another man's baby? I'm not talking about giving natural birth to a human child. I'm talking about giving birth to purpose, giving birth to your God-given purpose, having the ability to understand that the processes that you go through and that you are growing through are not just for you. I say all the time that I know that what the gift that God has given me is not for me, it's for somebody else, but I also know it's not for everybody else. And because I know that it's not for everybody else, I am not... I am now in a place where I'm comfortable not trying to sit at tables that I'm not welcome at, um, or I'm comfortable being able to allow God to pull out the chair and welcome people that have been sitting at my table for years to get up and move at another table. Why? Because what I found out is that you can be surrounded by people for a many of years that come to your table with absolutely nothing. And that's okay because in this season and in this walk of life, we have to be able to have the mindset that I am blessed to be a blessing. So it's okay that you come and sit at this table without bringing anything. You don't have to bring the juice. You don't have to bring the, uh, you don't have to even bring the silverware. Don't bring no napkins. Just bring yourself because I prepare some things at this table. And I know that is a detrimental need for you. However, after you have sat at the table for six months, there should be something happening, some transformational changes happening in your life that when you come back to the table, whether it be for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or even a snack, that you are bringing some type of substance. You're bringing some type of value. And after six months, we see that there's no growth. There's no change. You are still coming to the table empty-handed because when you sat at the table, God knew that when you sat at this particular table, he prepared everything that you needed to equip you for growth, to equip you to take you to the next level. However, you, we as a people, when we sit at a table broken, when we sit at a table um, in our se season of lack, when we sit at a table, we have to realize and identify that even in our brokenness, even in the, the season where we don't have all that we need to be even able to give something else to somebody else, even in those seasons that I can still produce something that's going to add substance to the table. Even when I'm not bringing macaroni and cheese, even when I'm not bringing chicken, even when I got to bring uh, Dr. Cola because I can't afford Coca-Cola, even when I'm not bringing the napkins, but I'm bringing saran wrap because God only knows that there is going to be some leftovers and we're going to have to store some things up for the next meal, right? So today, my question to you, and I'm, I am want to inspire you to understand that there is a season in your life that God is going to give you everything that you need to prepare the table. He's also going to put people at your table that has nothing to contribute. Uh, people don't like to talk about it. Like you mean to tell me that God is going to set me up and give me everything that I need. All right, John, he's going to set me up to give me everything I need to give to everybody else. And I'm going to allow five other people to come sit at this table and they have absolutely nothing to bring. Absolutely. So people don't want to, 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 to allow people to sit at their table when they don't have nothing to bring. However, we look at things in a natural sense. I remember it was a time where 
I literally felt some type of way. Good morning, Debbie. I felt some type of way hanging with certain groups of people because they had materialistically more than what I had. They were always bringing something. They were always giving something. And while I did not have it in the natural to do, I felt bad. I wanted to give, good morning, Minister April. I wanted to give what I did not have. And it came a point where some of those people started to make me feel bad about not being able to give. But what they did not know, it, it was not in my heart to just sit at their table without having anything. Ah, they, they couldn't identify what was in my heart. So because they couldn't identify what was in my heart, God had to literally allow me to be comfortable with getting up and moving to another table. And my inspiration to you today is to understand that you are sometimes going to be put in a situation where you're going to be the surrogate for many people. You're going to have to carry the baby of many others. Because they don't have the ability where they currently are in the season of their life to literally carry what God is giving them. So you're going to be placed in seasons in your life where God, even when this is too heavy and this is too hot for me to carry, how is it that you are giving me, giving me the, uh, uh, the equipment and the necessary tools to carry someone else's baby? It is, it is better to give than receive, but many people don't have the mindset. We say the cliche, but they don't have the mindset because they don't understand the blessings of God. Mm, blessings of God. The blessings of God, there's a cycle of blessings and, and the way the blessings of God works is I, I'm giving you uh, uh, some good stuff here. The blessings of God, the process of blessings is when God blesses you or when God places on your heart to be a blessing, even when you don't have to give, even when you show up to the table, knowing that this table has fine china, this table has the top line, um, the, the top line gourmet meals, right? When you are able to identify that, Sure, all of this stuff is set before me, and it looks like it may be too much for me, but your heart, when your heart is in a pure place, oh my God, when your heart is in a pure place, that when a place that your, your pocketbook, a place that literally your mindset is not able to keep up with, but your heart is there to say, God, I yearn to give. I yearn to set a table before people that have need of me. God, I yearn to be in a position where I can carry someone else's baby. So understand that even a woman that's unable to give birth, natural birth to a child, the doctors say, oh no, you know, it's not going to be possible for you. However, one thing I love about God is no man, no man on this earth can determine and has the final say when it comes to your life. So the doctor may have told this woman, you can't carry a child. You can't carry full term. After I lost my first baby, I was told I couldn't carry any of my pregnancies full term. Well, we all know that's a lie. But God himself had to be the one to do the, to do the surgery with, within my body, within me, to get me to a place to build my body up to the place where not only could I carry the baby full term, but I was able to, to do it joyfully. I was able to do it joyfully. So sometimes God will put you in a season where you are in a position to carry someone else's baby. You become the surrogate in the spirit room. John, it was a big lie. Four kids later and to God be the glory. And the only reason why I stopped at four and I, it's no more than four is because I said, listen, we got to do something about it. But even in me tying my tubes, if God so see fit to impregnate me again, Guess what? Naturally, it will happen. However, listen, what I'm telling you is that even as you go through this thing called life, 
everyone is not going to be equipped in various seasons of their life to be able to carry even themselves. So understand that everyone that comes to you is not always coming to use and abuse you. Everyone that's coming um, seeking counsel, seeking guidance, is not coming to take advantage of you. Sometimes God has a place them there because God sees something in you that they need. And the reality is, for real, for real, they have something that you need. But at that point in time, you don't see what even they have even in their brokenness that you need. You just see and you just hear God saying they have a need of you. Yes, we have to know the difference. We have to know the difference. But in order to know the difference, that's where relationship with God comes in. You have to have a relationship with God. And you have to do, and all that you do, you have to do it with great intentions, knowing that I'm doing this. I am serving people. I am doing this service, not unto the person, but unto God. I, I told my friend this morning, I said to her, I said, literally, good morning, Ronnie. I said to her, I said, listen, I'm living my life now in, in the way that I am living it because I'm writing my obituary. People don't want to talk about death, but even when I'm dead and gone, I want someone to be able in the next generation to go on YouTube if YouTube is still around and look up or find these videos to be inspired to know that, listen, I know right now that I am in a place where I can't carry my own baby. And I need some help. So when I go and God allows me to be put in the circle and in the company of people that have the strength to be able to carry me, I'm comfortable and I don't feel bad about being able to be carried in a season. Because there's going to come a season where I'm strong enough to, to carry someone else's baby. I'm going to be able to be that surrogate for somebody else. I'm going to be able to say, listen, Ronnie, I see that there's a greater you down on the inside of you. And right now, the devil has, is having his way with you, but it's okay. Because I'm going to love on you until you are able to see you the way that God sees you. Until you are able to identify that even when I'm running with this crowd of people that I don't belong running with, even though it seems like they're giving me more than what I'm giving them, God is saying that you have some substance in you that needs to be impartated into them. There's a spiritual impartation that must take place. But until you get into a into the place where your mindset is shifted, God is literally trying to shift and shake some things up to be able to be glorified. So I said to her this morning, I'm writing my obituary. We sing the songs, we say these things, and we say, I want, may the works I've done speak for me. But it's not even may the works I've done speak for me that I may be glorified. But God, when you allow me to open my mouth, when you gave me Shay Speaks to, that, to be able to open my mouth to articulate what it is that you would have me to say unto your people or unto the people that would be willing to hear what it is that I am saying that you, God, may be glorified. That when the conversation is over, when the message is done, when the broadcast has ended, they can say, God, that resonated in me. God, I need more of you. God, I need you to surround me. I need you to put me at the table because right now I realize that this life, this thing called life is too heavy for me to carry. But God, because I'm able to identify it, put me in the company of people that will carry my baby until I'm in a place where I can carry it. Because again, the term surrogate is means a substitute, especially a person Dep deputizing for another person in a specific role or specific office. In this point in time, in this role, God, I'm 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 in a position. I'm in a place. I I I I'm I'm, I'm I just don't know. And I I know, but I don't know. I understand. I understand, but I don't understand. 
And God, I need somebody that's going to be able to help me carry this baby because I don't want to abort the baby. I know that you purposed me. I know that you gave me a gift. I know that I have a natural ability and a talent to influence somebody else. And because I know these things, God, I don't want to abort my baby. But I just need somebody that's going to carry the baby. And when you mature me, God, they will be okay to identify that they are only carrying it temporarily. <sighs> yeah. So it's almost like I'm carrying a baby for nine months. Now we're going back to we're looking at it from the surrogacy and the perspective of the natural. I carry a baby for a woman for nine months. In the nine months, people talk about, oh, God, you look so gorgeous, pregnant. And I start to sing to this baby. And I start to speak over this baby's life. But I knew when I started the process that I was carrying this baby for this other woman. But in the process of me carrying the baby through the nine months, I have connected with this baby. I love this baby. Then I give birth to the baby. And when I give birth to the baby, I see she's beautiful. I see she's everything that I dreamed of. I see everything that I spoke over her in my womb. I see that she's going to become. But now it's time for me to give up the baby. And I'm so connected that I don't want to give her up. I'm so connected that when I give her up, I lose myself in the process because I became too connected. So today I want to let you know that in the surrogacy, in this ability to be able to carry someone else's baby, you have to know that it's only temporary. You cannot possess and take control of what you was only given for a season. So while this woman or while Ronnie or John is sitting at my table and right now they don't have the ability to carry themselves, I can't carry their baby and expect to keep the baby. I got to be intentional and I got to be okay with when it's time for me to release the baby to understand that God only gave me this ability and this authority temporarily. Ah, I hope this is helping somebody because at the end of the day, you got to realize that you are going to be put in a position that sometimes you're going to need somebody to help give birth yet birth again to the next greater level of you that you have not able been able to see. But you're also going to have to understand that when God didn't turns it around and allow you to carry someone else's baby that you can't become so close and so connected that when it's time to release, ah, uh, when it's time to release their baby that you don't want to give it up. So get, listen, my question to you today, whose baby are you carrying? Who is carrying your baby? How long will you allow your baby to stay in someone else's custody when God is saying to you, I'm giving you the tools that you need in order to mature, to be able to take your baby and listen, not only take your baby, raise, cultivate, and give birth to the greater you that's down on the inside of you. But I'm also equipping you with more than enough that when you mature, you have the ability to help carry someone else's baby. So this morning, whose baby are you carrying? Who is carrying your baby? And how long will you allow them to carry your baby? Knowing that God is giving you all of the tools you need to go and, and, and get your baby. So again, you guys, listen. Galatians, the scripture I'm going to leave with you today is Galatians 6 and 2. The scripture say, carry each other burdens. In this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. It is my due diligence. It's my obligation to help carry your baby. It is your obligation to carry someone else's baby. But it's important to understand that as you carry the baby, you are supposed to be birthing the greater even in this baby. But when it's time to release the baby, baby, you got to let the baby go. So again, when we are set in a position where God has entrusted us so much so to say, I love you. And I know that you won't make a fool of me. 
carrying John, carrying Ronnie, carrying Ty, carrying April's babies. You won't make a fool of me, but you will carry it in secret. <laughs> That's the key. In the secret, you will carry the baby. And after you deliver the baby, and once I say release, you will be okay with releasing. So this is Shay, y'all. I am Shay. Shay is speaking, but God is speaking through Shay. And literally when I speak, I want you to say, wow, wow. But leave inspired. Get off this broadcast inspired that I was called to influence a nation of people. And when we think about nation, I'm not talking about standing on a podium in front of 100,000 folks. I'm talking about the offspring of being able to speak to another person who carries a nation behind them, who's speaking to another person that carries a nation behind them, that's speaking to another person. So I ask, and I, I, I'm telling you, be inspired to literally pray and ask God, God, give me another perception. Give me another perspective. Show me this thing from another angle. I am Shay, literally here to just inspire the influencer in you. Be inspired. Understand that it's okay to be in a season where even when you're spiritually mature, to be in a season where you need someone to carry your baby. And be inspired and be encouraged and strengthened to know that there will be a season where someone will have to you will have to carry someone else's baby. I am just here to inspire the influencer in you. Please, you guys, share this live out. We are here on Wednesdays and Saturdays, Wednesday nights at 10, Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All of these live broadcasts can be found on YouTube at the channel I Am Shay Speaks. That's I-A-M-S-H-A-Y Speaks, as P E A K S. Listen, su subscribe to the channel. Tell a friend to tell a friend that we want you to come on in. Be, listen, listen, be a speaker. I want you to come on. Be a speaker on the show. Get, allow God to give you the title of a topic and literally speak from that topic as he has given it to you to inspire someone else. And the more that you practice and the more that you speak, the more that you become intentional about just saying what God is telling you to say, you don't got to get all deep. You don't got to speak in tongues. You ain't got to deliver it in a way, thus say of the Lord, <coughs> yelling, screaming, hollering, <coughs> excuse me, jumping, spitting, shouting, just speak it, just speak it. He said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. So ain't nobody finna beat you up with no word. If it's truly from God, you'll be able to understand and adhere to it if I speak it just like I'm talking now. And even if you don't, it don't resonate in your spirit now because the reality is our flesh don't want to act. Our flesh don't want to act right. Anyway, that's another topic for another day. Listen, you all have an amazing Saturday. I am super, super excited, y'all. I'm going to have a babysitter. My cousin is coming down, my cousin Bessie, my friends, they have just been showing me much, much love, celebrating me, and guess what? It has inspired me. You don't know who is really paying attention to your life. I had have, I have people that cash at me graduation money just to say, I'm proud of you, congratulations, and I'm not talking about $5, I'm talking about $25, $40, $50. I am just filled up and the, the, the support and the encouraging words has really, 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 um, play, pushed me to go back to school. So I'll be starting back school in the fall. And I promise instead of having, after I finish the next degree, I want to have something where I can invite everybody is just open to come and celebrate, share the moment where it will be a platform where we will be speaking just to inspire somebody else. What's keeping you? What's stopping you from pursuing 
all that you desire to have. I love you too, Minister April. Thank you so much for being so attentive, always tuning in, always sharing our lives. Be inspired to know that there is a season where you will have to carry someone else's baby and someone will have to carry your baby. And at the end of the day, it does not make you less of a person because you are experiencing a season where you need some help. They are experiencing a season that they need some help. So again, I'm Shay here to inspire the influencer in you. You are having an amazing Saturday. I am just filled out with joy. Like for real. Like I'm, 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 when I say <coughs> live a life that produces consecutive wins, what looks like you're not winning, you have to know what it means and what it feels like to have victory, what it feels like to win. And when you know those things, you, you, you live life, a peaceful life. So I won't even keep going on and on and on. I love you all. I love you all. Thank you so much for always supporting and sharing out these lives. We are literally just building the platform. We are building the audience. We are building the momentum to say, listen, I know I was called to influence someone else. I know that I was called to be something greater than what I'm currently saddling for. Y'all, Shay, inspiring, the influencer in you. Share this live out. I love you all to life. Have an amazing Saturday. Thank you for hanging in there with me as we did go over our time today. But it was all good. Because guess what? I might be carrying your baby right now. Or you might be carrying a part of my baby. And I need it. So if God is laying it on your heart to reach out to somebody... Be inspired to slide in their DM, even if you don't talk to them, even if you had, you know, issues in the past with that person. Don't allow that to literally make you miss your blessing because of your disobedience. Reach out to them, share some inspiring words, encourage them, love on them and do as God has called you to do. Be inspired to inspire someone else. Love you all. Have an amazing Saturday.